Uh, talk a little bit now that you've gotten a little more settled with the team. Uh, have you given any thoughts to long-term plans, what you'd like, what you, you know, anything in that arena? Thanks. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm super happy here and it's, uh, it's, it, this is a great place to be. Uh, this is a great style of play. Um, I'm again, I think we've all talked about it. It's, it's new for me. So it's something I'm, I'm adapting to, but, um, I, I really like having the ball and I like, um, controlling the game. I think it, it shows confidence when you do so. And, um, so I really like the style of play. I really love the people here. And, um, you know, for me, it's, it's taking one, one game at a time. Um, right, right now, the thing that's on my mind is going and getting three points against Miami. Thanks. So it, um, it appears clear from the outside looking in that you're, um, the guy who's the number one is going to get the last games. But throughout the course of the season, Nick has um, been pretty clear that, uh, you know, it's always been this competition. So uh, how much of that, number one, helped you get into the position you are now, just how you were mentally preparing for that? And um, do you feel pretty certain that um, you've got the rest of the way? Yeah, I mean, that's up to Nick and, and Rob to decide. Uh, who, who, who's getting the rest of the way? Um, again, the thing that I control is, is how I perform against Miami. Uh, if it is me that I'm that, that that's playing, and so um, you know, I'm confident that I can go in there and do well. Um, and, and you know, in, in two days, it's it's time to just focus on that. Can you specify? You've got that the whole team in front of you, and, and you've been observing these recent games, in particular the last two. Um, what um, in your mind has uh, has improved where is the uh yeah it's it's I know what you're saying because like we you know we, we get two big wins kind of back to back and yeah and it hasn't happened for quite some time uh and, and I've said this before like I don't think the the we're not doing that many things differently um it's just that the results those ones went our way um you know we're we're controlling the game in most of the games that we're playing in we're creating chances in most of the games that we're playing in our expected goals are higher than the opponent's expected goals in most of the games that we're playing in. So um, despite the result being different, I, I don't think that we're actually necessarily doing a lot different. And how about if one more follow-up, please, yeah. Esteban. Um, the um, the emergence of Tylus Magno, and I, I don't mean to say the other way that he's, he's been slumping throughout the year in terms of producing goals. Uh, but the last two games, he's uh, been involved. But when he scored the the goal against Orlando, uh, can you describe what it meant to the team? And yeah. Him based on you know, you were further away. I don't know. Yeah, I, I almost it. I almost ran up. I'm, I, I mean, I was really really happy with for him. Um, he has uh, you know, he has all all the talent in the world, and and uh, he's young. Like he people, I think, forget how young he is. He's been here for. This is his third year here, I believe. Um, and so, like, when someone's here for an extended period of time, you, you might not remember how young they are. So um, there are there are things that younger players have to learn. And, and he he worked his, his butt off for the last, you know, four or five months without maybe getting the recognition that, that he wanted and, and the time that he wanted and the goals that he wanted. Um, and so when that moment came for him, I was very happy with for him, but but I think the entire team, um, we were just like, you know, I think proud is the right is the right word. He handled himself really well and worked really really hard. And so, um, you know, it's it's an example of someone like really deserving uh, that spotlight in that moment. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Going back to the Zoom, Juan Carlos. Hi, Matt. Thank you for the time. Just want to talk to you. You know, it's. A tough opponent, like they come with a from a tough result uh, yesterday. How do you prepare? You know, knowing that they're probably going to be like hungry for a victory, and knowing that they also like are in the hunt for the playoffs. And how do you prepare against like such a motivated rival? Uh, I I would say at this point in the season, every every team that we're playing is very motivated. Um, so I don't think necessarily anything needs to change about the about the way that we're preparing. Um, we got to prepare for an intense game, for a real game of soccer, because they like to have the ball. We like to have the ball. Uh, so tactically, it might be a little different from from some of the other ones. But um, I would say mentality-wise and things like that, we just 
prepare the same way uh, that, that we've prepared for the last few games and that we've prepared all year long. Um, yeah. Oliver? Sorry about that. Hi, thank you. Um, you've you've been playing um, with uh, Burke Risa and Thiago Martins Hi. these last five games. It's been a pretty steady lineup um, in the defense and in previous weeks it had, there was a bit of a mix and match. Can you talk about um, the, the, the chemistry that that is happening between you and what it's like to play with Risa and Thiago Martins? Um, I'll editorialize a little bit. It seems to me that they're kind of boring, but in a good way. Like they're just very solid. There's not a lot of drama in the back line. I'm wondering if you could comment on that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if boring is the right word, actually, but but I, I, they're steady. You know, they're steady. There's um, it's it's almost um, and I've I've said this about goalkeepers, about myself, but, but on the defensive side of things, if, if you're not noticeable, uh, typically means you're doing your job correctly. So, uh, and, and we are, are really working on that chemistry. Burke got here a month and a half ago, two months ago. Um, right away, uh, he was. He, we could tell he was going to be important to the team, and and uh, he he really uh, vibed well with with everyone on the team immediately. And and uh, Tiago is obviously the the amazing le leader that he is. And, and uh, so us three, along with everyone else in the back line, as well as the sixes, um, we're doing a lot of work uh, on the field and off the field to to maintain that uh, that chemistry and, and that um, understanding of each other and, and what we want on the field, as well as doing that in the in the video room. John Lupo. Hey Matt. So obviously, we're not. I at least don't know if Messi's going to play in this match or not. Did you? I was wondering if you happened to catch any of the game last night, considering he didn't play. And I know that Houston and yourselves yourselves play different styles, but did you feel like if you did see even highlights of that match, did you feel like maybe the Dynamo at least offered a template of how to play Miami when Messi's not in there? Uh, so, yes, I, I watched the game. I watched the whole game. Um Honestly, my my focus is not on whether or not Messi's playing. Um, my focus is, is is on getting three points, and I think uh, you know paying too much attention to one, two, three players is 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 dangerous. Uh, and so, um, you know, I think I think they play the same style regardless, and and that's what we've gone over in film, and and that's the the attitude that we have on the team is no matter who's playing, we're you know we're going there for three points. Christian. Hi, Matt. You talked at the top there about the, the adaptation process tactically with, with this team. Did anything surprise you personally during that process as you took in a, a new style and a new approach? Sorry, yeah. Could you just uh, re repeat the question? Sure. So you talked at the top about the, the tactical adaptation that you undertook when you came to the club. I'm curious if anything surprised you personally about that process. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think... I've always knew that goalkeepers are, you know, in the, in this possession based style, goalkeepers are important in their, in their part of the possession. Um, but one thing that I really had to, had to learn is, is not necessarily just like a, a passive uh, participant in, in this build up and, and in the possession of the ball. I'm, I'm, I'm much more active um, in my positioning and my decision-making and timing can, not just uh, help us maintain the ball, but also, you know, disrupt their press entirely. Uh, and so that's kind of that next step that I'm taking is, can I not just maintain the ball, but but can I actively uh, help break down their press? Back to the room, we'll go with Glenn. Yeah, to follow up on that. So mm -hmm. you know, what we've seen, and this is becoming maybe even across CFG, some of the other uh, clubs within CFG, but the goalkeeper is coming up to be connected almost as part of the back four or the back three. So when you talk about breaking the press, is that what you mean? That you're you're high enough where you're connected with them and then that's what's uh, really happening? Yeah, I, I mean, there's at, at different points you go forward, at different points you come back. And and, and so it's not always like set in stone, but um, just something that that I've been, that Rob and, and I have talked about is, is, uh, is knowing when 
to be somewhere and knowing where to be and when to be there so that I can I can take a more active role in in the breakdown of their press rather than you know just you know the the old school possession style of just get get the ball and pass to someone else yeah. that makes sense have you ever been this high up the field uh, in your uh, goalkeeping life not in my goalkeeping life but I played center back uh, in the past I've played I played striker my senior year of high school so ah. um I'm, I'm how many goals I haven't I played, I think, three games, and I had two goals, so it wasn't it wasn't terrible. <laughs> so you're co okay coming up for corner kicks late in the game. If you I don't know about that. Hopefully, <laughs> we don't need that. 